Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This week, it was reported that House Republicans are looking for a legislative plan to close out the year and to move forward into 2014. And as such, out a blank sheet of paper as their agenda. A blank sheet. Each month, polls put congressional approval rates at new lows, and more independent organizations rank the 113th Congress as one of the least, if not the least, productive of all time. In response, leadership of the People's House has continued to govern by sound bites and pass messaging bills that simply go nowhere, even painfully shutting down the government for more than two weeks in the process. If House leadership is looking for an agenda, they need only to look across the aisle to their friends. We have some suggestions, and chief among them is putting Americans back to work. During our August work period, I participated in some 166 events, meeting with constituents each and every time. At nearly every stop, my friends and neighbors wanted to know what was being done in Washington to help the private sector create jobs. My district is extraordinary, but not in this regard. I have to believe that the people of Albany and Schenectady and Saratoga, New York, my hometown of Amsterdam, New York, and the 20th Congressional District are thinking what America is thinking. They're asking what myself and our colleagues on both sides of the aisle are doing to grow the economy. House Democrats stand ready to work with Republicans to address the real challenges that face this great nation of ours. Sequestration-related cuts are estimated to cost our economy some 1.6 million jobs through 2014. Let's work together to save jobs and pass a budget that invests by growing in a justified way, in a fair way, revenues and belt tightening so that we cut as we can so that we then invest as we must. Our family farms deserve the certainty that a five-year reauthorization of the Farm Bill has helped them for decades upon decades. Our parties clearly don't see eye to eye on cutting such items as hunger assistance, hunger assistance for millions of veterans, millions of frail people, millions of elderly, millions of children. Well, if we work together on jobs, we'll help the private sector put people into jobs and cut poverty and reduce the need for hunger programs. Now, isn't that a humane approach? We see middle-class America experiencing pain at the gas pump, and we worry that our foreign policy is dictated by our dangerous dependency, our gluttonous thirst for fossil-based fuels. Yet we stand today without a clear and definitive clean energy agenda that would make our nation a safer place and create tens of thousands of jobs in the short term, boosting an American green-collar economy. It can be done. A report just last week on solar panels was interesting. If we would use just simply 5% of available rooftops in Los Angeles County, we would be able to create 29,000 jobs in that effort. In the past week, we've seen major severe weather events wreak havoc on the Philippines and across 12 states within the Midwest of our, re of our country. Even if you choose to ignore fact-based science that really proves climate change to be real and here, we can all agree that our aging infrastructure needs our assistance. It needs to be upgraded. It needs to be improved and replaced so that we're taking a proactive approach to sound this of infrastructure which grows jobs. Instead, we're allowing storms of the century to impact our communities and then have a reactive process that simply isn't the best way to do business. I could go on and on, but I only have five minutes here. Immigration reform, updating the Voting Rights Act, tax reform, expanding background checks for gun owners, or passing ENDA. There's more than enough for us to tackle that translates into jobs. And the vast majority of these, policy, of these policies, if passed in a bipartisan uh, fashion, as the government shut down, was avoided by a bipartisan vote with unanimous vote from the Democrats with a minority of votes from the Republicans, we could get things done if we would allow for votes to be taken up on this floor. A simple up or down vote, but get it done and grow jobs. This week, we solemnly observed the 50th anniversary of the death of one of the greatest leaders our nation has 
known in President John F. Kennedy. A man who once said, and I quote, never before has man had such capacity to control his own environment, to end thirst and hunger, to conquer poverty and disease, to banish illiteracy and massive human misery. We have the power to make this the best generation of mankind in the history of the world, or to make it the last. To act is both in our power and our duty. We must tackle these problems. I implore this House to take up a jobs agenda. Let's put America to work. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Gentlemen's time is expired.